Tonight's massive denial of service attack hits Bitcoin, Mozilla to sell ads, and Whole Foods bags a deal with Square. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 22 for Tuesday, February 11th, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. Apparently, it is Acquisition Tuesday. Yahoo has picked up New York-based startup Wander, a maker of an app called Days, which helps people share photos and activity as day-long packages. Days will continue on as a standalone app, and the five-person Wander team will start working on, quote, some exciting new projects as part of Yahoo's mobile and emerging products team. Meanwhile, Recode reports that controversial startup Clout, which quantifies your social status, has signed a deal to be bought by Lithium Technologies, which provides social customer experience management software for the enterprise, whatever that means. Meanwhile, on the Bitcoin front, Chief Security Officer at wallet service blockchain.info, Andreas Antonopoulos, tells Coindesk that numerous Bitcoin exchanges are experiencing a massive and concerted denial of service attack and that transactions as they are created, malformed or parallel transactions are also being created, which is designed to confuse and overwhelm the whole network. An exchange called Bitstamp halted withdrawals in order to keep everything synchronized. Other exchanges may do the same. Antonopoulos expects operations to return to normal in one to three days. Mozilla has announced that it'll sell ads within its Firefox browser as part of a new ad business. The ads will appear within the tiles of Firefox's new tabs page, which Mozilla is calling directory tiles. Last summer, Mozilla started testing an opt-in system that would allow users to receive tailored content based on their browsing history. A Mozilla spokesperson says the company sees 100 billion tile impressions in the U.S. alone each year, but the program will only reach first-time users, about 31 million uniques per month. The company currently makes 97% of its revenue from search. Digital payment company Square has double-bagged a deal with Whole Foods, a major grocery chain. The Square stand, which is Square's point-of-sale system, is currently being used at seven Whole Foods locations at in-store venues, so that's a sandwich counter or a juice bar, not on main checkout lines, not yet anyway. Square and Starbucks inked a deal to use Square's digital payment products at about 7,000 Starbucks locations back in 2012. Well, coming up, glasses that let doctors see cancer cells. But first, we have Mike Schramm joining us now, formerly of the unofficial Apple weblog and joystick, and now doing qualitative video game analysis for EDAR. Hello, Mike. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. I'm pr probably neither of us want to talk much about Flappy Bird. However, it's interesting today that the developer, Dong Nguyen, told Forbes that he pulled the game because it was an addictive product. Of all the video games that you've had the experience with, do you think Flappy Bird was, it was special in any way or is that just well. how video games are? It's certainly addictive, uh, and it's definitely like a game that's sort of centered around addiction. But it's interesting because he removed the game. Actually, he said over the weekend that in 24 hours he would remove the game from the App Store. He did, and then everyone kind of wondered why. And so it's interesting for him to hear today, not because he is making any money or because he feels like victimized by people saying it's a dumb game or anything, but he said it's because it's addictive, which is kind of interesting. Most game developers want their games to be a little bit addictive, want people to be interested in them. Um, but it seems like a much more socially aware thing. So we'll see. It's interesting, too. The interview on Forbes said that, like, he didn't want any pictures to be taken of him, and he wanted, like, to be very much out of the spotlight. Um, so he sounds like he's a strange guy to begin with. Um, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see what, like, he's planning next or if he, if he has other games. He has, like, a few other games still in the store that you can still download. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but... The number one free game on the App Store right now is a Flappy Bird clone, in fact. So there's actually, like, still ways to play those types of games out there. Yeah, maybe he just uh, wants a game that's not all that successful. Too much money. Not a good thing. Yeah, not, not, not successful at the cost of, like, and I think he was thinking that he was really ruining people's lives. Like, mm -hmm. it's a, addictive to the point where it's not fun for people. So, and that's that's what he was looking for. So. Well, speaking we'll of not fun, there was a study mentioned today on Kotaku that suggests that people playing games on the iPad, that playing games on the iPad, rather, is actually making people physically sick. I have heard this complaint before. It doesn't happen to me, but 
Is this actual motion sickness that some people are prone to? Uh, it kind of depends in my mind on how you're playing it. If you're sitting on the couch like Steve Jobs told us all to, and you're looking at your iPad from that distance, I don't think it's going to be a major problem, but it's a fairly large screen if you have it right up in front of you. Sure, it could cause motion sickness just like anything else. If you put your TV up to the, if you put your face up to the TV like I did when I was a kid, that can cause motion sickness too. So I think it's possible. I don't think people should stop playing their iPads uh, because they're worried about motion sickness. But yeah, if you cram any screen next to your face, you're gonna have some issues with it, right? No matter your, whether you're playing Angry Birds or Call of Duty. Well, what about that sort of overarching? morality issue that we always hear about violent video games. Today, the BBC cites a Canadian study that claims violent video games can inhibit moral maturity in teens. Is this the same same, or what do you think? I mean, there's studies like this. In fact, that exact study that you're talking about found that the majority of people who play these violent video games aren't affected by them. So it's just like sort of, it. it, it it's just like anything else, any other violent media where it could be a trigger for someone who has a pre-existing problem or something like that. Um, but I think the studies in general are fairly overrated. It's 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 interesting, like it's definitely interesting findings, but it doesn't mean just like the motion sickness thing, it doesn't mean that every time you pick up a video game, it's going to cause this reaction uh, no matter who you are. So, Yeah, case by case basis. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us on Tech News Tonight. Uh, of course, uh, Mike is over doing video game analysis for EDAR. Thanks again. That's right. Yeah, if you're if you're tired of Flappy Bird, there's a great game called Threes that's out there. Threes? Oh, yeah. Threes. We talked about it on iPad Today yesterday. Terrific. Great timing. Good minds think alike. Thanks, yeah. Mike. See ya. Finally, new glasses developed by Washington University St. Louis scientists could radically help diagnose cancer by making cancer cells glow blue after the patient is injected with a special kind of dye. The glasses are the latest in an ongoing effort to spot cancer a lot more early on and minimize follow-up surgeries. A scalpel equipped with a mass spectrometer that sniffs out cancer cells called the eye knife is already being used in the United Kingdom after being introduced last year. Quick correction before we go. On last Thursday's Tech News Tonight, we told you about NBC's story that claimed their reporters were immediately hacked when they turned on their mobile devices in Russia. Since then, the NBC report has been widely condemned by security experts as false and misleading. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Please do subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.